Hey guys, back again with another video. Some quarantine content for you, as my buddy Marquez likes to say. Today I want to talk to you about my most recent purchase, the Fuji X100V. Boom. Right off the bat, when Fuji announced this camera, I was interested. I've always been interested in the X100 lineup, and uh, I was really close to buying an X100F, but I, I just didn't do it. I got the Ricoh instead, as you've seen in my other video. Once the X100V came out, did a bunch of research on it, you know, watched all the hands-on videos, I just ordered it when it was available for purchase. And it's not a cheap camera, it's $1,800 Canadian. So having a Ricoh, I was like, do I really need this camera? But I, I bit the bullet, I bought the camera, used it for about two months, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, to be honest, when I got it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna test it out. Maybe I'm just gonna send it back after, you know, two weeks. Maybe it's not the camera for me because I already have the Ricoh. But the two cameras are quite different in what they do, even though they both kind of like hit that mark of a street photographer's camera, kind of the everyday carry kind of camera. They're both kind of in that mark, but I think the Fuji X100V provides a lot of other aspects that go beyond just an everyday carry. It can almost be your primary camera. It is fixed lens, but the image quality from this camera is amazing. It Honestly, it's a fun camera to use. The dials, the design of the camera, very Leica-esque. So it's kind of like the poor man's Leica, I would say. Not that poor though, it's still $1,800 Canadian, so not that poor. But the design language of it is very nice. I had a Fuji X70 before, way back in the day, before the Ricoh, and uh, I had it in silver as well. It looks great in the product shots, but like the material they used wasn't aluminum, it was like a magnesium alloy, and it just felt kind of cheap, even though that was like a premium compact. But this Fuji X100V, like right away when you pick this bad boy up, the heft, the design, the Fuji X100V is like the, the best iteration of the X100, it really is. The, the refinements they did to this camera, it's so clean, so refined, the edges are awesome, they use aluminum, and it's just a, it's just a beautiful piece of equipment. Just like compared to the Ricoh, the X100V just has a lot of heart and soul if that makes any sense. It's kind of a camera that you just want to look at. It's, it's a statement piece. It makes you excited to pick up and go shoot and to use. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's just a beautiful camera. That being said, why don't we just take a closer look at the X100V. So here we have the X100V in hand. As you can see, it is quite compact for an APS-C camera that houses a rangefinder design with a 23mm f2 lens. I have the square hood attached to the front of the lens and I think it looks really cool. It acts as a barrier against things knocking into the lens element and it will also help minimize unwanted lens flares when you're shooting. The camera is rain and dust resistant, but in order to have a full seal, you're gonna need to put a filter on the front of the lens. Since the lens element moves front and back, Fuji couldn't completely weather seal it. For me, I've just been rocking this square hood with no lens cap and no filter. I find it just looks badass and I can use it without a lens cap so it's ready to shoot at any time. The aperture ring is very nice, a bit stiff when you first use it and it can take a while to get used to because it's pretty shallow against the body of the camera. It goes from f2 to f16 with half stop increments. This outer ring can be adjusted for digital zoom, manual focus or any other custom setting you choose. Here's a lever that you can customize. For me, I have it set to activate the EVF or OVF swing it to the other way and it activates the ND. Oh yeah, this camera's got a built-in ND, which is really, really handy if you're shooting in bright, sunlit environments. A weird thing is that they don't let you activate the ND when you're shooting video, and uh, that's kind of a big problem. Hopefully they address that when uh, through firmware. The front dial here can be customized. It also presses down as a button. I have this dial set to change the ISO when I turn it. 
On the top of the camera is all your manual control dials. Here we have the shutter speed dial and the ISO dial. A nice update they did on the X100V is that you can just lift it up and the dial stays in position and then you can just turn it. Then push it back down to lock in your ISO settings. Just turn this to turn the camera on and off. There's a threaded shutter release button. Here's another custom button you can program. I have it set to white balance. Here's the EVF dial. It's pushed right up against the camera, but there's a nice weight to this dial so it won't get knocked around too easily. And you can hear it sounds really nice. All in all, these dials feel super premium. They have a really good fit and finish that you're gonna notice when you start turning them. Over to the back of the camera, you have the OVF or EVF. You can choose which one you wanna use. The OVF is great if you got your settings dialed in and you wanna see more of the screen. It's great for street photography if you wanna see the entire frame and then you have frame guidelines so you can see when a subject walks into your frame. For me, I'm an EVF person, so I use that mostly. I just like seeing what I'm gonna get when I have my settings dialed in. The back dial, I have it set to my shutter speed. It also presses down as another custom button. Here's an exciting feature of the X100V, the tilt screen. Honestly, Fuji has done such a great job here of the design. If you saw this camera, you wouldn't even think it had a tilt screen. It sits flush against the back. Uh, the only indication that it's a tilt screen is this little indent here on the side, and you can see it just kind of comes out very easily, and it's beautiful. For me, I love using a tilt screen. Tilt screens are super useful for getting those angles that you just can't get without it. Something controversial is Fuji's decision to get rid of the D-pad on the back. Uh, this kind of frees up more room for your thumb, so I don't really miss it. And with the joystick, it really just does everything you need. I think this camera's got enough custom buttons on it that you really won't miss the D-pad once you start using it. Tucked away on the side is the quick menu button. You press this and you have access to your quick menu grid. All the tiles can be customized to what you want. On the side you have the micro HDMI, USB-C for charging, and a mini mic jack. You will need an adapter here to put a normal 3.5mm mic jack in. Uh, weird decision by Fuji. On the left side, you got the focus settings, single point, AFC, and manual focus. On the bottom, you have your quarter 20 for mounting tripods and other accessories, and the battery door here with your memory card slot as well. Battery life on the X100V is rated for 350 shots, which I found is good enough to get you through a day of casual shooting, but for a full day of shooting, you probably want an extra battery. So there you go, here's a closer look of the X100V. Now let's take a look at some of the photos I've taken with it. All these photos are JPEG straight out of camera with some light editing and visco. To me, I don't want to apply the same kind of workflow that I have with my work camera on this camera. I want to just go out, shoot the JPEGs, and share it as soon as possible. And I think that's really refreshing and it's kind of nice not having to work from a computer to get images that I'm happy with. So what are some of the pros about the X100V? Who's gonna use this camera? Why would you wanna get this camera? The pros for this camera is that it's a fun camera to use. To be honest, it's just a beautiful camera that makes you wanna go and shoot with it. It's not like my work camera, which is the Sony a7R that I use like every day for work. I'm not too pumped to use that camera, to be honest. It gets shit done and that's what it's for. It's for work, it's to get shit done. But this camera, it's got heart, it's got soul, it just looks beautiful. It makes you want to pick it up and shoot with, if that makes any sense. Uh, a more tactile pro about this camera is the lens. It's a 30 fil 35 millimeter lens I find is a perfect sweet spot for me because I like doing portraits. I can get good shallow depth of field with the F2 aperture on here. And with the ND, I can shoot in like nice sunlight and uh, it's not a problem for me to get that shallow depth of field. So the lens, it's a great lens. The EVF is amazing too. It kind of it works very well. I don't have any negatives about it. It kind of fills the frame very quick. Fuji X100V is my first X100 camera. It's just built very well. It's fun to shoot. The image quality is amazing. And the video actually is actually really good too. So that's another pro. The video, you can do 4K 30 with a 10 minute limit. Um, that's fine. Uh, people say it overheats. I've actually had the battery, I actually had the heating indicator come up, like warning me it's getting hot and you can feel the camera, it gets pretty hot. But you can, ex what can you expect? It's, a, it's such a compact camera, shooting 4K 30, 
you can shoot F log. If you hook it up to an external recorder, it shoots uh, like 10 bit 422, which is crazy. So I'm actually really happy with the uh, video performance. I actually shot my Rico and the Mamiya video on this camera and I shot it with the AFC and the focusing does pretty good and the image quality is very nice when paired with the, uh, I shoot it in the Eterna film stock and it looks awesome for video. So that's a big pro. Uh, another pro is obviously the size, a very compact size and getting and the image quality you're getting from this compact size is awesome. The weather ceiling is another pro if you're going to go out in the rain, you know, you got, you got some protection there, but make sure you uh, add that UV filter if you want that full seal. But okay, what are some of the negatives or what are some of the cons on this camera? Uh, I think a big negative on this camera is there's no image, sen image stabilization. I really miss the image stabilization that I had in the Ricoh GR. Uh, when, you, you know, when you're using that slower shutter speed and sometimes you're going to need that sh slower shutter speed to slow down action or you want to get some kind of blur. Um, yeah, like the stabili no stabilization in this, so it's, it's kind of missed. I miss it a bit. Uh, another negative is that it, it's, it's, uh, it's got an ND, but you can't use it for video, which is weird. Uh, so I, like, I don't get that, but the ND for the photo is very good. Another negative, I, I think the battery life could be better on this camera. You're getting 350 shots for all day shooting. You're, it's not going to last all day. You want to get another battery. The battery life could be improved. Yeah, that's about it. I don't have too many negative things to say about this camera. Um, maybe the price, the price is, uh, it's, not, it's not cheap. $1,800 is a serious purchase, especially for a camera that might not be your everything kind of camera. I mean, like a Sony A7 Mark III or a, like a Canon RP, those mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras is kind of like your every everything kind of camera. It's going to cover all your bases. It gives you the most features for your money. Fuji X100V is more of a premium compact camera, a bit niche. If you're buying this camera, you should have the money for it. Like don't burn your money on this if you don't have the money. Um, but if you have the money and you're looking for a camera that can kind of inspire you to go shoot, I would say the X100V is for that. This is a camera for enthusiasts, for professionals, and I think that's, that's the market this is aimed at. Um, yeah, for me, I'm very happy with this purchase, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna hold on to it, and I'll share more of my thoughts with you guys as I use it. It's only been two months, but uh, yeah, it's been a long video, but let me know if there's anything else you wanna know about this camera. I would love to share it with you guys. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. It's a long video, man. Whoa. Yeah, we're still in, still in quarantine right now. I haven't got, really gotten a chance to shoot this camera as much as I wanted to. Dang, this quarantine sucks, guys. But this COVID, man, we gotta beat the COVID. You gotta plank the curve and then destroy the curve. But we're almost there. Stay strong, everybody, stay safe. And uh, yeah, I'll make more uh, quarantine content for you guys. Peace.